Nuclear proliferation is the spread of nuclear weapons, fissionable material, and weapons applicable nuclear technology and information to nations not recognized as nuclear weapon states by the Treaty on the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons, also known as the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty or NPT. Leading experts on nuclear proliferation, such as Ethel Zoling and of the University of California, Irvine, suggest that states' decisions to build nuclear weapons is largely determined by the interests of their governing domestic coalitions. Proliferation has been opposed by many nations with and without nuclear weapons the governments of which fear that more countries with nuclear weapons may increase the possibility of nuclear warfare, destabilize international or regional relations, or infringe upon the national sovereignty of states. Four countries besides the five recognized nuclear weapons states have acquired, or are presumed to have acquired, nuclear weapons. India, Pakistan, North Korea, and Israel. None of these four is a party to the NPT, although North Korea acceded to the NPT in 1985, then withdrew in 2003 and conducted announced nuclear tests in 2006, 2009, and 2013. One critique of the NPT is that it is discriminatory in recognizing as nuclear weapon states only those countries that tested nuclear weapons before 1968 and requiring all other states joining the treaty to forswear nuclear weapons. Research into the development of nuclear weapons was undertaken during World War II by the United States, Germany, Japan, and the USSR. The United States was the first and is the only country to have used a nuclear weapon in war when it used two bombs against Japan in August 1945. With their loss during the war, Germany and Japan ceased to be involved in any nuclear weapon research. In August 1949, the USSR tested a nuclear weapon. The United Kingdom tested a nuclear weapon in October 1952. France developed a nuclear weapon in 1960. The People's Republic of China detonated a nuclear weapon in 1964. India exploded a nuclear device in 1974, and Pakistan tested a weapon in 1998. In 2006, North Korea conducted a nuclear test, non-proliferation efforts. Early efforts to prevent nuclear proliferation involved intense government secrecy, the wartime acquisition of known uranium stores, and at times even outright sabotage, such as the bombing of a heavy water facility thought to be used for a German nuclear program. None of these efforts were explicitly public because the weapon developments themselves were kept secret until the bombing of Hiroshima. Earnest international efforts to promote nuclear non-proliferation began soon after World War II, when the Truman administration proposed the Baruch Plan of 1946, named after Bernard Baruch. America's first representative to the United Nations Atomic Energy Commission, the Baruch Plan, which drew heavily from the atchison Lilly and Tull Report of 1946, proposed the verifiable dismantlement and destruction of the U.S. nuclear arsenal after all governments had cooperated successfully to accomplish two things the establishment of an International Atomic Development Authority, which would actually own and control all military applicable nuclear materials and activities, and the creation of a system of automatic sanctions, which not even the UN Security Council could veto, and which would proportionately punish states attempting to acquire the capability to make nuclear weapons or fissile material. Baruch's plea for the destruction of nuclear weapons invoked basic moral and religious intuitions. In one part of his address to the UN, Baruch said, Behind the black portent of the new atomic age lies a hope which, seized upon with faith, can work out our salvation. If we fail, then we have damned every man to be the slave of fear. Let us not deceive ourselves. We must elect world peace or world destruction. We must answer the world's longing for peace and security. With this remark, Baruch helped launch the field of nuclear ethics. 
to which many policy experts and scholars have contributed. Although the Baruch Plan enjoyed wide international support, it failed to emerge from the UNAEC because the Soviet Union planned to veto it in the Security Council. Still, it remained official American policy until 1953, when President Eisenhower made his Atoms for Peace proposal before the UN General Assembly. Eisenhower's proposal led eventually to the creation of the International Atomic Energy Agency in 1957. Under the Atoms for Peace program thousands of scientists from around the world were educated in nuclear science and then dispatched home where many later pursued secret weapons programs in their home country. Efforts to conclude an international agreement to limit the spread of nuclear weapons did not begin until the early 1960s, after four nations had acquired nuclear weapons. Although these efforts stalled in the early 1960s, they renewed once again in 1964, after China detonated a nuclear weapon. In 1968, governments represented at the 18-nation disarmament committee finished negotiations on the text of the NPT. In June 1968, the UN General Assembly endorsed the NPT with General Assembly Resolution 2373, and in July 1968, the NPT opened for signature in Washington, D.C., London and Moscow. The NPT entered into force in March 1970. Since the mid-1970s, the primary focus of non-proliferation efforts has been to maintain, and even increase, international control over the fissile material and specialized technologies necessary to build such devices because these are the most difficult and expensive parts of a nuclear weapons program. The main materials whose generation and distribution is controlled are highly enriched uranium and plutonium. Other than the acquisition of these special materials, the scientific and technical means for weapons construction to develop rudimentary but working, nuclear explosive devices are considered to be within the reach of industrialized nations. Since its founding by the United Nations in 1957, the International Atomic Energy Agency has promoted two, sometimes contradictory, missions. On the one hand, the agency seeks to promote and spread internationally the use of civilian nuclear energy. On the other hand, it seeks to prevent or at least detect the diversion of civilian nuclear energy to nuclear weapons, nuclear explosive devices or purposes unknown. The IAEA now operates a safeguard system as specified under Article 3 of the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty of 1968 which aims to ensure that civil stocks of uranium, plutonium, as well as facilities and technologies associated with these nuclear materials, are used only for peaceful purposes and do not contribute in any way to proliferation or nuclear weapons programs. It is often argued that proliferation of nuclear weapons to many other states has been prevented by the extension of assurances and mutual defense treaties to these states by nuclear powers, but other factors, such as national prestige or specific historical experiences, also play a part in hastening or stopping nuclear proliferation. Dual-use technology Dual-use technology refers to the possibility of military use of civilian nuclear power technology. Many technologies and materials associated with the creation of a nuclear power program have a dual-use capability, in that several stages of the nuclear fuel cycle allow diversion of nuclear materials for nuclear weapons. When this happens a nuclear power program can become a route leading to the atomic bomb or a public annex to a secret bomb program. The crisis over Iran's nuclear activities is a case in point. Many UN and US agencies warn that building more nuclear reactors unavoidably increases nuclear proliferation risks. A fundamental goal for American and global security is to minimize the proliferation risks associated with the expansion of nuclear power. If this development is poorly managed or efforts to contain risks are unsuccessful, the nuclear future will be dangerous. 
for nuclear power programs to be developed and managed safely and securely. It is important that countries have domestic, good governance, characteristics that will encourage proper nuclear operations and management. These characteristics include low degrees of corruption, high degrees of political stability, high governmental effectiveness scores, and a strong degree of regulatory competence.